Welcome everybody to the uh, second week of automated flight. This is the first video of a couple uh, as I have separated, I've decided to separate out the historical part, the control theory part and the mathematical part. So let's have a look at what is in store. So the four learning objectives or topics for this week are the historical developments in uh, flight control some control theory terminology, that will be a separate video. The complex plane and the Laplace transform are a separate video as well. So today, in this video, we'll focus on some historical developments and choices that manufacturers have made and the implications that has, uh, those have had for uh, flight automation. Um, many systems in an aircraft uh, have some form of control uh, uh, system. So for example, cabin pressure, um, hydraulic pressure, all of those things are regulated. Where I want to focus on today is the uh, autopilot system. And if we look at the two main manufacturers, Boeing and Airbus, they both have a different philosophy on how to deal with automation. Boeing gave um, the pilot ultimate control of the aircraft and Airbus gives the flight computer ultimate control of the, air, uh, of the aircraft. Now both have advantages and both also have disadvantages as we will see in some of the videos um, in, this, uh, in this presentation. Now Boeing's philosophy up to about uh, 1980 was that there, um, it was a flyby cable. All control surfaces were controlled by cables attached to the flight controls of the pilot. And there was no flight envelope protection. And what does that mean? Flight envelope protection means that the aircraft is um, ensured to be in its safe flight envelope. So uh, speeds um, shouldn't get too low or too high and all kinds of co configuration uh, like flaps or bank angle, they are protected so that the aircraft remains in a safe state of flight. Now, Airbus's philosophy, um, 1980s and onwards, is that the aircraft would be fly-by-wire, so that the pilot, although he has control inputs, like a side stick um, and rudder pedals, they are not directly linked to the flight control surfaces. First, the pilot inputs get fed into a computer and the computer decides uh, what part of that input is safe enough for the aircraft to continue flying while well, within its uh, protected envelope. So two completely different philosophies where ultimate control on the one hand is in the hand of the pilot and on the other hand in the hands of a computer where the manufacturer decides what's safe for the air uh, aircraft and what is not. If you put full control uh, in the hands of the pilot, the pilot can actually put the aircraft in a dangerous flight configuration, a bank angle um, uh, speed, and can completely destroy the aircraft. And uh, Boeing chose, uh, Airbus chose to do something uh, slightly different. Now, um, in this uh, first video, I want uh, to show you um, a bit of video where a long-time Boeing pilot trans uh, is put into a, an Airbus aircraft. Now this pilot is not just any pilot, this is Bruce Dickinson, the lead singer of Iron Maiden, uh, which makes it a, a more interesting video in my opinion. ...of all air accidents are caused by the man at the controls. And though you can't prevent many kinds of pilot error, Airbus have designed the A320 to protect itself. This plane, the first A320, is used as a flying test bed to find the limits of what the aircraft can withstand. Because this is a test aircraft, it's full, crammed full, of equipment like this, which tests up to 4,000 parameters every time the aeroplane goes flying. The aeroplane even has its own ballast tanks, so it can change its center of gravity. Having established the aircraft's safe limits, Airbus programmed the computers to stop pilots from going beyond them. However, there's one condition that it hasn't encountered yet, and this could be perhaps its most severe test. Me. Just before we go for the takeoff, Bruce, I'll let you do all the flying here. So even though it's your first time uh, actually flying a, a real Airbus, uh, okay. I will take it. 
Peter Chandler, the test pilot, must have some kind of death wish. I've never flown anything like this in my life. I'm a Boeing man. My 757 has a control wheel where Airbus have put a place for me state freight. After all, it is French and one must have something to eat your dinner off. This little side stick replaces the control wheel I'm used to and all the trim controls. It's a completely different philosophy, a bit more like flying a video game. OK, we're cleared to go. Here we go. And keeping it straight with the rudder pedals. One hundred knots. As OK, I'll just pause the video here. Um, and um, fast forward to a section where you can see that if you um, put the aircraft in a certain angle bank that the uh, a, a traditional um, old-fashioned Boeing plane would just simply keep rolling and you'll see the uh, in this video that um, the Airbus plane will accept only a certain amount of input and keep the plane in the bank angle that is safe for the plane. Over 50% of all fairgrounds. <laughs> Any pilot can tear his plane apart if he puts his mind to it. But the Airbus has been tested to its limits on this very plane. So the computer prevents a careless, cack-handed or even unconscious pilot from exceeding those limits. What's called the flight envelope. Well, Peter doesn't seem to have lost his nerve yet, and the wings are still intact. So we're going to try one more test, one of the more reckless things you can do in a passenger jet. I'm going to try and stall it. So now what I'm going to do is be a terribly bad pilot. I'm going to be close the thrust levers. You could even say mad pilot if you wanted. This plane had better do what it says on the tin, or you'll be reading about me in the morning papers. So, I'm, I'm descending at the moment, uh, about a thousand feet a minute. I'm descending towards a mountain range, uh, which is not a sensible thing to do under normal circumstances. Peter obviously gets his adrenaline jollies, flying the most dangerous manoeuvres low over the Pyrenees. I've got 150 knots, and um, I'm going to take my hand off the thrust, the, the thrust levers. Look, no hands. And I'm still keeping 150 knots, but we're descending. And at some point, I'm going to get a, a, a from the left seat a simulated whoop whoop pull up. And at that point, I'm going to not touch, touch the thrust levers, um, and I'm just going to pull back on the stick, an instinctive like ah, get me out of here type reaction. This would be unbelievably stupid on a normal plane. Of course, the nose would shoot up in the air, but if you don't increase the throttles, it would stall and drop straight onto the mountains below. This is the daftest thing I've done in an airplane for years. OK, so here we go. Oh, ah. Full back stick, panic stations. Without me touching the throttles, the flight control computers kick the engines to full thrust. I'm looking at the speed washing off. I'm looking at like all kinds of warnings going off on the thing. I've got towed up with alpha floor. Look at my shoulder. Oh my god, look at that attitude. Ah, that's just astounding. That is just really something. We're going up at 5,000 feet a minute. I haven't touched the throttles. I've just left them where they were before. And. If I wiggle the wings slightly and roll left and right, I still have control of this gorgeous bird. That was... Alright, so that wasn't bank angle that was stalled. The video also contains a bit about uh, bank angle, but you see that the plane keeps itself in a safe attitude where the throttles were closed, pulling back on the side stick would usually cause the aircraft to decrease its speed rapidly and enter a stall. The uh, Airbus ensures that um, the uh, aircraft, uh, the engine spool up and that it remains safe. All right, 